Hello everyone, this is going to be probably quite noisy because as you can hear, the, uh, the lawn mowers are out. Um, welcome to Carroll Road, we had 2,000 fans in that stand today. It was uh, remarkable, it was brilliant, it felt great um, and it was lovely to see. Obviously it's the first time we've had anywhere near that number of fans in the stadium since February, the end of February. Um, we had a thousand here for Preston. Um, and I think if, if the people are here, and as you may have picked up on, Norwich kind of, the, the tickets didn't exactly fly off the shelves. I think there were still some tickets for the Nottingham Forest game. Um, maybe people are a little bit out of the habit of coming to the football when it's on. Um, I think everyone who was in here today probably will left going, ha, huh, yeah, this was good. And maybe the people who weren't here and were thinking about it may have gone, Oh yeah, I do feel like feel feel like that might be something to come back to. Appreciating, of course, lots of people still won't feel comfortable about coming to the football at the moment with everything that's going that's going on. Completely understandable too. Um, and if you were at home and following this in in the safety of your own home or whichever, I'm sure you would have enjoyed it too. Because Norwich turned this around remarkably. To be honest, they've won two one against Tony Pulis's Sheffield Wednesday. I think it's important I include the manager's name uh, in this particular match report. Uh, Norwich went behind to a wonderfully crafted goal on 60 minutes. Um, Adam Reach's cross was, was wonderful. Um, uh, Josh Windus's header was good. Um, the defending was pretty awful. And M Michael McGovern seemed a, a little bit questionable in terms of positionally and, and repelling the shot. Although whether he could have physically done much about the header, I'm not sure. Kind of a similar issue to what we've had over the last few games, really. Really well worked goal at a point when the game was just starting to create some spaces. Sheffield Wednesday had been remarkably tight. The only points where Norwich looked like they might get some joy in the first half were when they were catching them in transition or they produced some good overloads in good areas so they could move the ball quite quickly. Uh, when Sheffield Wednesday was sat in their shape, which was five, uh, four, five, one for the most part, um, Norwich struggled a bit to, to break it down and you know, didn't really trouble Sheffield Wednesday much. And actually, Sheffield Wednesday's deliveries in the first half. Daniel Farker said they only had one cross and they scored from it. I mean, that's not really true. They had a couple of really good crosses early in the first half and Marcus Stephen had to clear one off the line and they had some really good opportunities. Um, it was just they were so restrictive in what they were doing in that first half and it's completely what you would expect. But as I said, in that second half, it started opening up a lot more, both sides. And obviously for Sheffield Wednesday to get the first goal, you just think, out because it was looking like hard work for Norwich to try and break them down at that point. Then they were a goal behind. You know, they don't concede goals Sheffield Wednesday and it was going to be a really tall order. Um, Tony Pulis within three minutes, I think it was, he brings off Josh Windass, uh, brings on Liam Palmer, I think, who, after a debate on social media that I had, is basically a right back. Um, so he took off the striker, right, brought on the right back. Yeah, you, you can play uh, Kadeem Harris up front. He's a winger, he's quick, he's not a striker but you know he's an attacking out there um, and they basically went to a 6-3-1 which is I've watched it carefully it was a 6-3-1 effectively and what, in those sort of 5 to 10 minutes after the goal uh, maybe 10 to 15 they were really deep but they counted really well they had two very good penalty shouts I haven't seen the first one back it's the one most people are telling me was a penalty I do still have in my mind what happened at Luton everything evens itself out they say I mean certainly ebbs and flows and Norwich were on the wrong end of some penalty decisions maybe I don't know I don't know but by all accounts the first one should have been a penalty the second one I personally thought Mario Vrancic slid in and won the ball so I don't think it was um, but you know it was enough for Sheffield Wednesday to surround the referee at the full time whistle and they're clearly not happy and then and you know Norwich looked tired they looked like they were struggling to create things um, and then Shemi Poheta has a, has a slight hamstring niggle I think comes off for Josh Martin I think I've got that right or no no Stephenman came off for, sorry Stephenman came off for Josh Martin um, and all of a sudden it, it, it clicks I mean Mario Vrancic I didn't think was having a particularly great game he puts a lovely through ball in a great run by Josh Martin as I said within a couple of minutes of coming on and just puts the ball under, under Wildsmith which is a wonderful finish for his first senior goal a wonderful moment didn't really celebrate it completely calm it's like well we've still got plenty to do here which, bearing in mind, you've got the fans here as well. It's a big moment. Love that. And I think he's a great kid with a really big future. Even though he's, you know, it's been a, a struggle of a couple of a game, couple of games recently. Um, since his really promising debut, I think you understand that. Daniel Farker understands that. He got that substitution absolutely spot on. Brilliant goal. 
Uh, that was 80, the 81st minute, and then on 84, Mario Vrencic plays a one, or Max Aarons plays a one-two with Mario Vrencic. Vrencic back heels the ball brilliantly. The finish from Max Aarons is superb to drill it across into the far corner. Um, a possibly questionable goalkeeping, but it is a brilliant finish. And, uh, and Norwich are two-one up, and um, you know, in that period, Sheffield Wednesday got so deep, and they did have such limited out- outlet. You looked at them thinking. Although, obviously, they'd had the penalty shots after that. Just thinking, you're stuck here. You're, you're, you're stuck. You've got nowhere to go and nowhere to play out. Um, you know, it's not often you see a 6-3-1 for the, first, for the last 25 minutes or whatever it was. Um, and and Nor- Daniel Farker altered it in, in Norwich's favour with the substitutions. And the players went out and did, it, did a real trick for him. A, as I said, for Mario to spark like that was brilliant to see. We know the impact he can make. And for the team itself to really pick themselves up um, was great because I have to say with 15 minutes to go I was looking at it and thinking I don't see this happening today so fair play for the credit the character the changes the attitude was brilliant to see and as a result Daniel Farker gets to celebrate with his Olays in front of the 2000 fans who thoroughly enjoyed it Norwich City are still top of the championship despite all the injuries it did ease up today because they had Temu Puki. They actually had a striker on the pitch. They had Temu Puki um, on, and it did make a huge difference in terms of the balance of the side and a focal point. Massive difference to not having a single striker on the pitch. Um, they picked up potentially hamstring issues with Bajeta and Vrancic, although Farka seemed a little bit positive that it might not be that bad. Um, and hopefully, with a few players going back into training, there will be more options to come, although it might be a stretch again come Forest to visit Nottingham Forest, Chris Hutton here on Wednesday. We'll have to see, but um, just a great achievement. And I think the final point probably to make is uh, Tyree Somatoye coming on for his second senior appearance. One of the things he does, he gets the ball, wins it, runs straight into the corner. Love that. What a great show of uh, just having a head on his shoulders to know what the best thing is to do at that point. And that rattled off the final few moments of, of a really fantastic victory um, all things considered bearing in mind you could see the issues there were really for the first hour um, they were quite short of chances before that but you know they did it in the end um, great to see Max Aaron score the winning goal as well I think maybe it's right to expect a bit more from him in attack um, this season I don't actually think he's been that bad at all but you're talking about a player, I suppose, who's really top level and wants to be top level. There's room for him then to kick on and, and show how much of an influence he can be in the championship. Um, and that's a pretty good way of, of, of starting to repay that. Long may it continue. Um, back here again on Wednesday. Hopefully 2,000 more of you as well. Um, if we keep doing this, we'll all be happy. Hopefully a few more players back as well. We will see. Norwich got up to eight substitutes today. <laughs> so there's still a free seat. Um, but maybe Daniel Farker will get to name a full bench on Wednesday. Who knows? In the meantime, Norwich is still top of the championship. It's a remarkable position to be in given all of their injury issues. We'll see how we get on on Wednesday. In the meantime, um, thanks all for watching. Leave your comments and questions below. I'll read through them all. Probably maybe more of your comments and questions. I might not get a chance to answer them. Um, uh, there'll be plenty of pieces over at The Athletic over the coming weeks. We've got lots of plans in place. So um, make sure you get on there, theathletic.co.uk. If you listen to the On The Ball podcast, you might be able to find a discount code if you don't subscribe as well. Do it. Uh, In the meantime, look after yourselves and uh, enjoy your weekends. See you very soon.